Hello guys. Today I'm going to talk about something very important in especially microservice based architecture. If you work on a monolithic and the microservice both, you know that when it is a monolithic application, everything is under the hood. So when you're testing, you get test everything usually. But when it comes to microservices, microservices are like very distributed. It's separated. Separation of concern is one of fundamental principle. So integration testing is the one of most lacking thing in any software uh, implementation I have seen with the microservices. Because we feel like unit testing or like developer testing and functional testing and non-functional testing is enough. We usually don't bother much about the integration testing. But integration testing is the one of the most key point in the microservice implementation. The reason is there are two characteristics we discuss we need to have in the microservice. One is independently scalable and independently deployable. Independently deployable mean each service can have their own change on, on their own pace. So that means if they change something, we just need to make sure nothing breaks, right? So we discuss in detail what are the patterns we can use to uh, this independently deployable and so and so, but I'm not going to touch those here. Okay, first thing is understanding integration requirement, integration scenario. For example, if you take a shopping cart implementation, then you know uh, someone search item, place item, at uh, like place item in the shopping cart and then check out and then it go to the inventory check order confirmation and uh, finding a, a dispatch riders and dispatching so you can see at least three to four microservices involved here sometimes it may be five right so search service um, order service inventory service and uh, dispatch service uh, billing service like reporting so, so many things involved so you need to understand how these microservices connected to with each other that is your first phase right so where what is the input and where it goes and who's interesting on that and that phase also you need to make sure you are covering a particular scenario where you run the integration testing the second thing is you set up the environment Environment should ideally identical to the product environment, but I'm not talking about the specific, uh, like uh, hardware aspect. Hardware aspect is not necessarily, but the data wise and the database, the events and the event brokers, the Kafka, whatever you have, the tools and the framework in the production, you have to have a say, set up in the this, uh, integration test environment or a QA environment. Usually we use the QA environment. And we need to make sure whatever the flow things and items in the production is available. That means if the production is sending a push notification, you should have push notification enabled. If the production is sending an email, you should have email set up here. If the uh, production is uh, sending a Kafka events or a RabbitMQ, whatever the events, those are, has to be set up in this environment as well. Third step is the defining the test data. When you define the test data, you need to make sure these test data can flow across your in uh, integration scenario. For example, uh, the scenario we discussed, if the user ordering, if you are planning to order item A and B, you need to make sure A and B have enough stock in the um, uh, inventory and also you need to make sure the pricing are set up like product price and the everything selling price, everything set up, delivery charges are set up because uh, depend on the where you select to deliver, maybe you are selecting the location A or location B those uh, delivery charges should be set up in the environment and that means entire end-to-end -end test data you need to make sure is there. The fourth one is defining a test cases. This is very important because you need to pick scenario. You can test entire system, right? Integration testing doesn't mean you test entire system, all the functionalities. No, you need to find what are the most critical or must, what are the most used uh, cases in your system, right? Because example, again go to shopping cart someone should be able to order item and uh, like add to the cart and check out and get it delivered right so that is a basic functionality of your system right that is what mean online system so if you can do it it doesn't matter you have some advanced features or not so you need to make sure you identify the test scenario properly what are the most critical or most required it uh, scenario you to test the fifth one is obviously now executing the test case right so it 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 can like probably because of the new bill because of the environment change because of the data change for some reason you should be able to trigger the your test cases and also you should be able to monitor uh, flow across your test cases 
how it work and where it is now and what is doing and so and so forth so that's the fifth step the sixth step is you need to make sure you have a proper monitoring and logging is set up because you kick off a test case now it run for five minutes you have no idea what's happening and where it's heading right so you should be able to have uh, this environment set up uh, the monitoring setup in, in place that can be logging like a uh, year case stack or a cloud watch or doesn't matter what it is but it has to be have a proper logging mechanism and ideally structured logging not that you don't have to open a uh, log file anymore right that is a, like kind of 90s um, structure so now we don't do that anymore so we are doing the structured logging you can query the logs right using the best thing is uh, using a year case stack and also you should maybe you have a setup like a prometheus or some kind of a metric uh, setup to see whether the services are doing well whether the services are going like out of memory and dying itself so what is happening in simple inside so that is your sixth step so now the last step is you should be able to conclude you grab your test results and the logs and how it work and what are the end results and uh, defining what happened to you that right whether it's a success it's a like deployable like will it break anything on the production uh, like will it get any complaint midnight calls or anything in simple what happened to the test whether are you satisfied or not about the results so what are the frameworks available to do this right so it's easy to tell but is there any framework yeah if you're working on a spring project you can use a spring cloud contract so where um, it's easy you to like test uh, these things across uh, like integration tests across the services and also uh, there's a citrus framework that's also you can use there's a framework called pact uh, that is also you can use uh, for this type of work and um, wire mock karate i mean there are enough frameworks out there you just can uh, google and uh, find some frameworks come and go like um, i didn't work with the spring cloud contract recently but i hope it's still there uh, and um, yeah Finding a framework is not a big deal, but what's a big deal is identify and understand what to test and when to test and how to test. Okay. And finally, it's highly, highly recommend integrate this with the CI CD pipeline. That means when you continuously integrate and continuously deploy, meantime, you continuously test this. So that is a little bit tricky because you should have a preparation stage and the cleanup stage because otherwise, uh, so when you create the test data, you run the test, you have to clean it because otherwise next uh, test cycle will fail. So therefore, when you plug into the uh, CICD pipeline, make sure you have this test data creation and a cleanup process as well, other than the, what we discussed. Then, talk to you later. I have to go now and stay safe. Take care.